Hey everybody, I hope and pray that you're doing well today as we come to our word from the word. And today that word is security. Security. Now, we know that in our life and in our day-to-day -day walk in this physical life, we cannot find true security anywhere. Now, surely you may go into your house and lock your door behind you, but somebody could break in. Same for your car, same for where your job is. I mean, anywhere you go, there, there's no security. Then we think about, okay, well, you know, my money, my possessions are secure in a, in a bank, in a vault. Well, we know that can be subject as well. Think about now how quickly things that uh, the whole world wants to go to, you know, this electronic uh, money, which that's a story for another time. But just with the, the click of a button, that could be disappeared. Now, security is not just found in material things. I think a lot of times that's where we tend to think we have security is, well, if I have a lot of money, then I can take care of anything. If I have a lot of possessions, that will provide. If I have a lot of food and a lot of clothes and a lot of toys. But those things don't bring security. Oftentimes, what they bring are just more troubles and more headaches with them. Now, surely some of those things we need and have to have, but they offer no security. There's no job security, no matter where you work. Right at any point in time, that job can be lost. So what do we find security in? Well, if it's nothing in the physical world that gives us security, then we must look to the spiritual world. And we say, is there anything spiritually that I can have security about? Well, I believe that you can have eternal security. I believe that once you're truly saved, you're always saved. I believe that. I believe that's what the Bible preaches and teaches. Now, I don't believe that just because you said some words that that means you're going into heaven. I believe that it is all about the heart and it is about what you have accepted and if you have truly made the Lord the Savior of your life. But today, so what does that have to do with Israel? As we've been talking about this week, right, to think about the things that God says he is and do not fear for I am God. Well, up today, some security that we can see and even give some hope for Israel, even in the midst of their sin. Don't forget that, even in the midst of their sin. What does he say today? In Isaiah chapter 43, we'll look at the first two verses and end to part of verse three. He says, but now, thus says the Lord who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Now, again, I've said this before, the covenant promises that he was making to Israel, specifically some promises for Israel, but he was sending his redeemer. Yes, he would redeem them there physically where they were at, but spiritually, he, he was really going to pay the price. He was going to send his Savior, Jesus Christ, to ransom us, to be our redeemer. And oh, what security we have in Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. You say, well, wait a minute. He says, when you walk, you won't be overtaken by the water. Well, remember a flood came one time. He said that would never happen again for the whole earth. He says, well, the flame won't be able to touch you. Well, do you remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and the fiery furnace and what happened with them? Do you not look ahead to think about the things that will happen in the end times? to think that that would be actually saving us from the fire, saving us from the punishment. But see, here's the thing. We have to remember, if you continue on through chapter 43, you see the good and, and the things that God says, I am and I will do and I have done. But then he also talks about the things that Israel has done wrong. And it's almost as if you could read it this way to say, in spite of your shortcomings, in spite of your sin, in spite of your continual rejection of me, I have still chosen to redeem you 
based on my love and my work for you. See, that's the whole thing is that security does not come. Our eternal security, our spiritual security, our security even in our relationship with God does not come by things that we do. Our security comes only by what God is doing, has done, and will continue to do. It's all from his end. Our security does not come from our part. Our security comes only from him. That's the only thing that guarantees our future. That's the only way that we have any security. That's why I believe you can have eternal security because if I could mess up one time and lose my salvation, then what hope would there be for anyone? In that case, I think the only one of us that ever would have made it would have been the thief on the cross. And that would be just because he repented and and trusted the Lord as his savior and then died immediately. He didn't have a chance to mess it up. But I believe if you have truly turned your heart to the Lord, you have truly accepted the gospel, you have followed the the plan of salvation that's in scripture, not not the the man-made additions to it, but you have simply followed what Jesus Christ has said himself and been saved, then you have that for all eternity. All eternity. To think about that, to hear God say, I have redeemed you. It wasn't because anything you did. The only part that we do in salvation is our obedience and trusting in him. That's it. Having faith, placing our faith in him. And it's not the person that has the faith, it's the object of the faith. And so when we place everything we have in him, he who has redeemed us, the body of Christ, to all who believe, to all who have called on the Lord, shall be saved. Whosoever surely meaneth me, and it surely meaneth you. Today, you can have security in Christ. God bless you. And I pray have a great, great day.